is look at some of the new 32 crop pictures from 2017. This is my eighth trip to see them in person. I was just there. And these were all beautiful works of art. They weren't really messages per se. You can interpret them as messages, but mainly they're artwork. Like you go to the Archibald and you see a painting and you say, what is the artist trying to say? So they aren't as objective. But some of them, this was regarded near the Cerniabis giant as one of the most beautiful ones. You can interpret it as the Lady of Fatima or as the resurrected Christ. And it was this beautiful thing. And that's the best image I could get, a, a radiant figure inside of a vesica piscis, also called a mandorla in the, in the Catholic Church. And this is where it was drawn on the side of a hill here. These beautiful videos. If you really want to see these, go look at YouTube and get a drone video like by Matthew Williams and you can see the detail, every little blade of grass. And when you get up close, you can see the lay is just beautiful. It's barley swirled there and the crop wasn't damaged. The farmer wasn't even angry about this one. The farmer said it was all still alive. There was no, nothing lost. And here's the head of the person. This is the spirit inside, the glowing spirit. Now what's interesting about this one was you could have two interpretations, one for the women, one for the men. It's exactly 100 years after the famous Fatima UFO event in 1917, where a woman from the stars or whatever said in Fatima, Portugal, do not be afraid. I will not harm you. I am from heaven. Exactly 100 years. It could also be the resurrected Christ. That's how they draw Christ all the time. Clearly a spiritual figure. It could be from the Led Zeppelin song at the end. <laughs> the lady who shines light, you know, at the very end. Or to, not to, anyway, the very end of the Led Zeppelin song, Stairway to Heaven. So, now what we want to do in a crop circle or something like this, this is a good lesson on how to interpret crop pictures. We need to look to see where it was drawn is half of the message. So w the crop picture is half the message and where it was drawn was half the message. So right away, people saw it was drawn next to this gentleman here, the Cerniabis giant. This is English people have carved in the hillside there, a primitive man with a huge erection and a club. <laughs> Near Cerniabis, very crude man there, okay? So I think I'll just tell you the sociology of this so you know. So when this appeared over here, a lot of very crude English people made a sexual connotation about it and said it was a woman's sexual organ. It was just, but they're very crude people. It, what you perceive depends upon how it's filtered in your brain. That wasn't what it meant at all. But that's what they, they said. Oh, but of course, this is grass here. If they could have just drawn it right here if they wanted to do that, couldn't they? But why is it drawn over there? So landscape is very important. And here's why. There's grass there. Instead of drawing it right there in the grass, that's grass next to it. There's the Cerny Abish giant with an erection in his club, the violent sexual man. It was over here, and it points across this field to this thing here, which sort of looks like, sort of looks like an angel or a resurrected Christ to me. So they chose a second landscape thing to point it to. So what we're doing here as an interpretation of art, I would say they're giving us a choice. What do you want to be? Which way do you want to point? Do you want to become like this or like that? It's like a swivel, isn't it? Did I explain that well? Yeah. So they're offering us, what do you want to become? Do you want to become like these, the man up there or the man down here? And this was regarded as one of the most cleverest crop pictures of the year. Artistically, that's a very high level of art, okay? It's a Catholic symbol. Now let's skip ahead. I'm only going to show about eight of them. This one appeared on June 9th, and they were counting time until the solar eclipse. And this was actually five, two and a half months until the solar eclipse. Interestingly, it was what's called a strawberry full moon. Which, so they made it look like a strawberry. <laughs> so the center of it's textured like a strawberry. It's this big pentagon, which is five divided by two, like a crown. And the very center, and here you see it here, and the most interesting part, the very center is highly textured. So if we look, all of these are highly textured here, 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 here around. It's actually a pentagon. You can see the center is a pentagon, just like the outside was a pentagon. And if you zoom in and look really close, look at that.
Now, does anyone here think that was made by people walking around with a board? Does anyone could have done that manually with a hand? Or any, no, nobody. So this is a genuine extraterrestrial artwork. It's not, it's artwork, it's not really a message. It's a beautiful, and you can zoom in and see this is the, the lay, it was a big pentagon shape. All of these are in precise locations. That's in barley. So that's quite interesting. So it appeared on the night of a strawberry full moon in five over two lunar months before the eclipse. It's a five-sided pentagon divided into two parts. So it's like five divided by two. That was the outside pentagon over here. And this is the inside pentagon, that thing I showed you. It's a strawberry full moon, and it sort of has the, just for fun, I guess, they gave it like strawberry texture in the middle. So that was definitely an artist interpretation. But it's interesting because it gets you in the head of the artist. They know there's a strawberry full moon. They know enough about us. They know everything about us. They know we're calling it a strawberry full moon. So it gets right, it's just like an artwork, like you'd see at the, it's anywhere else. Now when you look at the landscape, the eclipse was going to look like this a few months later. This was August. And they chose this big crescent light symbol. And then right next to it, they put it here. Now actually, I didn't show, if there's a sky map of the eclipse, if I'd shown it, there's a bright star Regulus in Leo, which would have been right here, if you go to a star map. So they're basically putting a star map on the ground. They did this in a few places. Large maps of the sky are simulated on the ground as art. So this was a bright star Regulus near the eclipse. And they did this several times. Sometimes some image in the sky, they'll draw astronomical art on the ground. So that gets you in the minds of these people. Why are they doing it? That's why they drew it. And Regulus is called the king star, so it looks like a crown. So all of that comes into an understanding it's just as art. It's just art, like you go to the exhibit. This was a very famous one, July 16, a tree of life that points to sunset, where the eclipse would be two months later. This was seen by on the BBC News and thousands of people visited it. It's called the Tree of Life from Jewish Kabbalah. Here's a Naiko Nakar's artistic replication of it. It's beautiful, isn't it? And I decomposed it geometrically, of course, and it decomposes into these three figures, the Tree of Life from Sacred Geometry, the isocrystal hexagram, and an equilateral triangle will reproduce that shape. So you see what it goes into. This means the symbol from Thelemum. And when they drew it, they drew it so the rays of the setting sun would go right through the middle of it. So on the drone video, you can see the sunset goes right through here. And this is later in the year. This was in June. In August, the sun, with the eclipse, was all, the sun moves during the year. Later in the year, the sun would have been right there. So it points to where the eclipse would be in about two months. So if in case you're wondering, many crop pictures show an ancient kind of art called sacred geometry. This is called the seed of life. This is the flower of life, and this is the tree of life. And here's some examples. The seed of life, the flower of life, and the tree of life. Some people are wearing that around their neck, I was just noticing. And you see people are like this, and my theory is that they lived with, lived with us in the past with their particular style of art, major Egypt, Samaria, and you see these in ancient Herod's, Herod's temple. You see this style of art from two or 3,000 years ago, and maybe some of the ET gods were living here, and that's what their style of art, and now we're seeing it again when they're coming back. So this is my likely hypothesis. This is an ancient style of art. The temple of Osiris near Abydos has this, but it's, it's all from ancient Earth's past. So it's quite interesting. This is a, these are the three figures you always have to know in art. When you're studying crop pictures, you have to know all three of these things because they appear over and over again. Now, this was a, on the solstice near Avery. Matthew Williams had a drinking night, and he woke up in the morning and saw it, quickly sent his drone out to photograph it before it was cut by the farmer. This beautiful textured image, like a sunflower, with little petals there. It looks like a key or the eclipse shining or a sunflower. And let's look at this texturing. Let's see how it's textured. Now we zoom in, it's really textured, isn't it? Like before, but even more so. Let's look, should we look even closer? So the whole thing's like that. So look at that, you've got this thing here, that thing there. I just took a little section of it. I've got the original 
film, that thing there, that thing there, and the whole thing is going around like that. So again, does anybody believe this was done like the gentleman said, using all fakes and rope and boards? Does any, anyone believe that? Ray, if you do, go ahead and explain this. <laughs> so we know now the gentleman, the question that we said wasn't right, so I'm just showing you something. And this is just this year, this is happening every year for 28 years. Let's look at one more. Look at this beautiful texturing. Now, interestingly, these, this is the stem of the flower. And over here are two little petals, like at the base of a flower, you see? And using the drone photography, the original drone, you can see every blade of grass. Oh, these are just excerpt. They can go over, and he sees every little, every, every wheat stem you can see accurately. These are just excerpts from it. So very highly textured. And interestingly, where you look to see where it was drawn, again, geometry. Here's the overall image. It points right at the pyramid, the Silbury Hill. Like the pyramid is the key or the flower. So this is some distance. This is about two or three kilometers. This is by Matthew Williams, the uh, beautiful drone photo of Matthew Williams. So they've oriented it uh, some huge distance to that other point in the landscape. We've had it pointing at the giant. So they, they're using landscape features, and this is quite typical for crop pictures. The landscape feature and the crop picture go together. If you just study the crop picture without the landscape, you don't really learn very much, which this means that they're looking down from above when they do it. They're designed from the air, high in the air. Quite a nice thing. This is about two kilometers, I think. I don't know how large. Now, I didn't get there until late July, and this was the first one I saw in person at Clay Hill. And it's called Metatron's Cube, which is another kind of sacred geometry. And it used to sim symbolize descent from a hill or pyramid. This is Clay Hill here. So that, and they often put crop pictures in these fields around here. This one was right here on the 20th and the 18th. And this big spectacular thing was here. Eventually I got in and we walked along here, I think with my wife, when I came this way over the top of the hill. Then I came through a barbed wire fence over here. <laughs> so the farmer wouldn't let anybody in. I had to go through a barbed wire fence, I think about here. And, and this was a, the eight in, I had just gotten to England then. And this is another close up view of it. So the elegance is just like way beyond anybody could, you know, the most artistic elegance. And it's a Metatron's cube, again from sacred geometry, from way in the past. Metatron was also Enoch, the archangel Enoch, who's in the Bible, was Metatron. He was taken up to God to live forever. Maybe he is living forever. This is, you call this an Enoch cube. And these are little like snake eyes around the outside. That's a very uh, <coughs> mature crop. Are they yeah. generally in mature crops? Uh, it, this one was because it's late July. Generally, late July and August is the mature crop, but the rest of the year they're not. This is a, is a mature orange they crop. Tend to appear more in mature crops. The more complex ones do, because the reason is the, the crop dries out a bit and they can do more complex things with it. Once it gets dry, they can patent it, because the wet crop's sort of hard to move. It gets more complex. And these are my own personal photos. I was there at Clay Hill with my wife and her friend, and I took, I took a bunch of photos. This is sitting up at Clay Hill. I just walked up there. This is walking across it, and I said to myself, oh, it's a long way across this crop picture standing at one end of it. It must have been about 150, 200 meters going across it. And this is actual color. I haven't changed the color. It was orange like that. And then there was another family there, and these girls, I didn't want to show people, but just show you it was a, sort of a, a, the dogs, the girls, everybody walking around. It was a friendly, friendly atmosphere. So it's a beautiful thing to visit on the side of a hill. And Basically, it looks like what's called Metatron's cube. It's a version of that, which is, a, again, a form of sacred geometry with these six circles going around, an ancient form of art. Now, we had a space of about two weeks where there are no crop pictures inexplicably. And then a few more appeared. And the first really big one was at Rollwright Stones, about halfway to Oxford, on August 5th. I found about it in the morning. We rushed over there that afternoon. And the solar eclipse on the 21st, there were going to be four bright planets nearby, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, and Mars. So the artist must be into astronomy. So what he did was he had a picture of the eclipse in the beginning, in the center, and the four bright stars around the outside. It was just astro astronomical art. So he drew the outside stars as pentagrams, 
the inside was an octogram, and here's like the eclipse that was going to happen. This is like astronomical, metaphorical art. And it was beautiful. This was again on the side of a hill, sitting there. Now let's look at this little section around here. Look at that little thing. Now I walked through it and didn't know what it meant. But then they got close-up views. And you can see this. I'll show you a close-up view of this in a second. Overall, this figure is something called Rub el Zib, which is the end of a chapter in Arabic calligraphy. So it's like we're just at the end of a chapter in Earth history. They did that intentionally. There's no way that that's not intentional. This, marks the, this eclipse marks the end of a chapter in Earth history. So we're entering a new chapter now. The eclipse on August 21st. We're entering a new chapter in Earth history as they see it, as time travelers. So this is like in the Quran. Every, they put this special symbol. Now let's zoom in and look at these. I walked through all of them. This was, I was standing in it and looking across the beautiful lay of fallen crop there. And I was standing in it looking from one side. Uh, this is the center I was walking through. And you can see how nicely it's patterned, swirling around various ways, that sort of center. And then the cross lay, it goes back and forth like a zipper. And I was trying to count along the ground how many times it goes back and forth, and I couldn't. It turns out it goes 52 if, when you had the aerial shot. But this thing, you go that way and then this way, that way, this way, back and forth, zigzag, and you see that's all under it. So when you're walking through this, it's a huge thing. It's like as big as this room. So it's sort of bigger, so it's sort of hard to count exactly. But it's very, it's very impressive walking through it. You're thinking, wow, what's this? For the first time, no one else has been there, you know? And nearby was the Rollwright stones, and this was eclipse related, and this was an ancient stone circle used to predict eclipses like the Aubrey holes at, holes at Stonehenge. So this is the symbolism nearby in the landscape, an eclipse prediction stone circle like the Aubrey holes at Stonehenge, and they drew an eclipse diagram right next to it. So in almost every diagram you've seen so far, there's been a landscape feature that matches the crop circle, often star art or something. It could be something else, the landscape and the crop. This one was on August 8th. We drove up and got there late in the afternoon. It was near Stratford-upon-Avon. It was about a three or four hour drive and has three different interpretations. And no, I'm not going to say which is, it could be a solar eclipse at sunset, an act of fertilization, or maybe a star trail from the Pleiades, if those of you like the Pleiades. And I got there, and this remarkable thing was there. And I'm walking through it on the side of a barge canal. There's no one else there. We were the third person in, third or fourth person, a long way from where everybody was staying, like in the middle of nowhere. And they flew over and took, here's Lucy Pringle's photo. It looks like the, the sun, sunset or sunrise, doesn't it? Which is when the eclipse would take place in England. And here's another close-up photo by Lucy Pringle. I have some also. See, it's very highly textured. There's 17 rays around the outside for the year 2017 as well. Yes, I won't get into it. But there's some details that are quite interesting. So there's several interpretations. It's, it's a work of art. One is there would be a partial solar eclipse in southern England. And that was the first one I came. I did this slide later that afternoon. I've got the Japanese flag and put it there and say, well, that pretty much matches it, doesn't it? You know, Like something about the, the eclipse at sunset. Interesting. However, I got on the internet and people said, oh, you're missing the whole story. It's more like a sperm and egg fertilization. <laughs> so here's the uh, tree here, the tree of life perhaps, and you have this series of dots coming across like this, like a sperm fertilizing an egg. And this series of dots, I walked over to it actually along that thing here, without and then I walked here. I didn't, you can't walk there because it would disturb the things. No one would walk there. So if, you, if you'd, you couldn't walk through, I guess you could pole vault. There were 13 of them. Dug yeah, dug down. you could pole vault, I guess. But you couldn't walk here. And there were 13 of them. And interestingly, there were 13 days until the eclipse took place. This was on August 8th. The eclipse on August 21st. So immediately I knew what that meant. And there were eight small ones and five big ones. So August 8th, the eclipse in 13 days. So all that, that, that's why they make change size here, five big ones. Eight small ones, 13 in total, 13 days until the eclipse. 
eight small ones is August 8th, and you could, anyway, there's a match, numerical match. And they say, oh, that's better. It looks like a fertilization, the egg, fer the uh, sperm fertilizing an egg. And then I said, well, I can do better. It also looks like the star trail of the Pleiades to me. So we have Alcyone, I forgot which star it was. I got a high resolution thing, Alcyone, the famous star trail in the Pleiades. And there's certainly a resemblance there. Like the Pleiades, people from the Pleiades will come and fertilize Earth and bring us new life. Metaphorically, you just see them, people from the Pleiades will come, give new life to people on Earth by an act of fertilization. This will be the artistic metaphor, which is an interpretation. But it's still beautiful. Do you think that's beautiful? Yeah. Does anybody think that's beautiful? Yeah. And I made that slide. It took me quite a while. I had to arrange everything. And I walked through it. And you can study it more in detail, but it's just beautiful artistically. I think it's better than what I saw at the Archibald yesterday. <laughs> or sculptures by the sea or whatever. So the final crop picture of the year was near London South End Airport, and it had a clever double meaning. It could be like a message broadcast by a radio tower, or it could be like a spaceship flying through a wormhole. Now this one looks a little bit messy. The reason is that there was a terrible rainstorm right after it happened. So it got messed up by the weather, but so that's why it's a little messier looking. And it was not photographed well. It was way off. It was like six hours drive from where we were. And uh, I didn't go there. Somewhere else. I, I was home in West Sydney when this happened. So it looks like a radio tower broadcasting a message. This is the crop picture. There's some clips. This was in the London newspapers. Very complicated symbols which I'll show you at the very end. I, I decided not to show you what the symbols are, but I can come back to it later. Are they broadcasting some kind of news to us? Matthew Williams took these photos on the eclipse. Are they broadcasting some news to us? Has something happened? What's happening? That's my immediately a thought, you know, and all these symbols. Now, interestingly, where they get the idea, it points toward a real electrical tower not far away in the next field over here. So when I got the thing is, oh, this tower is just right here. It points right at it. So evidently the artistic motif was based on studying the landscape. He saw that tower there and he said, well, I think I'm going to draw a tower that way. Now in one direction it points to this electrical supply tower. In the other direction, where do you think it points? It points right at the control tower for London South End Airport. So one way there's an electrical tower here. There's another tower there which controls the airplanes. So those are the two directions just lined up in. So it's really quite interestingly. I never get tired of looking at this one, thinking about it, you know? So I studied it for a while, and then I realized there pop, maybe there's a second meaning. A second possible meaning, you have to look at it. Maybe it's a spaceship flying through a space-time wormhole. So if you imagine looking at this, it looks like it's going nose first, diving into the wormhole. Let's look at it. I've made an illustration. Here we are. <laughs> Here's the little man in the plane. Here's the wormhole, the little man in the plane diving into the wormhole. Headed that way, you know? So do you, could that be true? That was my second way. Maybe you can see it from a different perspective. These symbols mean something, and I might come back to it later. Maybe it's two things they're telling us. So could this be the important news which is being broadcast? Was a spaceship passing through a space-time wormhole on its way to Earth? during the solar eclipse. Was it, you know, are they in transit to Earth right now? That's what I was thinking. So here's the summary of the message. This is a complicated one. So I made this slide as a summary for all the things that it could mean. You have the broadcast tower here, broadcasting a message. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. You have the eclipse happening at the same time, so it's August 21st. And then if you look at it from a different perspective, it sort of looks like a plane flying into a hole as well, like that. So sometimes crop pictures, because they think of three things at once, sometimes there's not one interpretation. You're supposed to integrate all three. Instead of A or B or C, it's A plus B plus C. So their brains work differently than ours. So generally, if they give three interpretations, they mean add all three. If you add up all three things, that's what we mean. It's not just one or the other. This is how crop circles generally work. You have to a plus B plus C. So maybe if we put all three ways together, we get the communication correct. It's not just one or the other. This is hard for people because we like to think of one thing at a time. So 
my next question is, is there a spaceship headed for Earth? Now, this was in the, this was in the London newspapers everywhere, the reason I mention it. All through the London newspaper, because they had no debunking story ready for this. They had, it was right near the airport. No one could have gone there, you know, would have been arrested. So again, near the airport, solar eclipse, eclipse crop picture, bizarre patterns from aliens appeared days before the eclipse spectacle. So this was in the London newspaper, this was out of the London newspapers. And they had no story to, they have no cover story. There was no one could have been there, you know, to make it by hand. They have no explanation. So, last part, and then, we'll, is there really a spaceship headed now for Earth, friendly people? And I went back, and a, a number of crop pictures from 2012 to 2016 suggest this might actually be the case. There is this big mothership headed for Earth. First of all, if you go back to 2012, there's a famous crop picture from Italy, which shows another image of the Pleiades right at the center. And then there's like a worm going out away from it. A worm hole, the worm leaving its hole. The worm is, the worm is leaving its hole, like a worm hole. You see, do you get that? And then I did this in 2012, I saw this. Where the worm is leaving its hole. Its base is the Pleiades, which is right here. They are there. And it's leaving it by a worm hole. <laughs> Bit of humorous. So let's blow up the thing. And I looked to see, when are they leaving the Pleiades? Why do they have certain numbers? And it turned out the number of circles in each part was a Mayan date for the date when it appeared. So June 22nd, 2012, when the Mayan calendar was 19, 19, 8, 16, and that's how many circles there were. So they're leaving the Pleiades in a wormhole 2012, which was five years ago. How long does it take to get here from the Pleiades? And here's another one in 2014 flying to Earth in the Pleiades. Here the Pleiades are in the landscape and image. They drew a crop picture next to it. It's like a bird flying from the Pleiades. And here's another one. This was last year in the Netherlands. <coughs> This is very dramatic. Eight bright stars of the Pleiades were drawn in crops. It's a perfect match. There are the Pleiades here and here and here and here, and almost perfect match. Of course, it may be something they may see a different perspective than us slightly. But it's definitely the Pleiades. They're drawing the Pleiades in crops. This was last summer. So there's a lot about the Pleiades. And this is obviously, <laughs> are they coming into land soon? You see, here's the triangular UFO. This is from 2013. You see the little exhaust. It looks like it's coming in to land here. And you can see a little triangular thing here, which looks like a triangle landing on a landing strip. So are they coming in to land soon? This is a spectacular crop picture. And if you look at it from above, you can't quite see from this angle. It looks like a triangular UFO that's flying out of a wormhole. This is the crop picture I just showed you. It's a little exhaust. Here's another one from 2010. Here's another one from 2007. It's sort of like the spaceships emerging from a wormhole to go to Earth and come in to land. I could say more, but and there's some other. This is a very big, intricate thing. That's another symbol shown. No, not, not Huma Kuba. It's another Mayan type of symbol shown in the middle. I just didn't want to get into the details for this purpose. Jaime Masson was there to put this on Mexican TV when this happened. But I could show more, but Max says, don't get details here. So it's very quite interesting that maybe there's a ship headed our way. Now, what about this one last year, bringing us the flower of life, the mothership? These strange symbols, the mothership and the flower of life are only, this was just last year. So you're really thinking the mothership's coming, you know? Maybe the little ones before, this is now really the mothership's coming. So what are crop circles for? People were asking me, in my view, the purpose of modern crop pictures may be to reduce the fear of aliens before we make contact with a coalition of friendly races who have wormhole or conduit technology, which we don't have. In other words, they can travel quickly through space between stars. And part of this message from two favorite, look at this message. Believe there is good out there. We oppose deception, conduit closing. Now the conduit was the little pipe they sent the message through, so they sent it through a long pipe from light years away. Maybe they're in the Pleiades when they did this. Maybe he's sitting around a planet in the Pleiades and his computer doing this. Do this. Do you think they're friendly? <laughs> so 
that's the conundrum so far. Now the question is, would you like to learn more? Yeah. Do you know who this is? Does anybody know who this is? Quetzalcoatl from, the, from Mexico City, the, the Teotihuacan, the city of the gods. It's his smiling. I, just, I found that amusing, the little smile, the smiling feathered serpent. <laughs> would you like to learn more? So would everybody like to learn a little bit more? Yes. You're still okay. I want to see if everybody's still keen after this. So the reason I put this was because we're going to talk about Quetzalcoatl next. And here you have the feathered serpent. Here the feathered serpent with his little smile and grin. Not really that terrified looking, as you know. Although he's a serpent. So if a spaceship's really headed for Earth, who's likely to be on board? What if it happens next month? What if it happens soon? It could be five years. It could be next month. Who's likely to be on board? It may be a space traveler called Quetzal or Quetzalcoatl from the Pleiades who once lived with the Mayans in Central America. And that may be too much for people. You think, oh, it was a long time ago, or there were no aliens in Central America. But we may have to revise our conception of what's possible or of history when we study this. Is it really happening? And here's a famous image of Quetzalcoatl from ancient Central America. You can clearly see La Venta Stella 19. You can clearly see a serpent, a man flying a serpent with a little controller like in the British Museum, you see little TV screens, things that look very technological, a little suit. So this clearly looks like an aviator of some kind. He looks like an aviator. This way wildly out of place for 2,000 years ago in Central America, if our conventional history. They also called him a Quetzal bird. This is from the famous sculpture from the City of the Gods, the Butterfly Palace, the Quetzal bird. So Quetzal is a kind of bird, Quetzal is a kind of snake. So they called him a bird snake. At least we'll see why that is. They even built a big pyramid in his honor at Chichen Itza. Every equinox in March or, or September, the shadow of a serpent goes symbolically from heaven to earth. So this little thing is like a serpent coming down certain days of the year when the, the day and night are equal. And you see these two little serpents right at the base of the pyramid with spirals in the thing. So that was about 900 AD. Why would they do that unless they expected him to come back from the stars? It's a big pyramid just built for this. And he, why was he called a bird serpent by the Mayans? It's because his space plane resembled a flying bird with the tail of a serpent. Now I'm going to let somebody else look at this. There's a great YouTube video, Kuku Khan, a brief story on YouTube. That's just another name for him, Quetzalcoatl and Kuku Khan. And they, the, if you go to this YouTube video, it really explains it well. And you see a serpent-like tail on the airplane, flying like a bird. And this is like they built into the pyramid. So there's a cuckoo con, a brief story. Three-minute thing, Ancient Aliens has already done it. I don't have to redo this thing. Many crop pictures have shown images related to Quetzalcoatl of the Mayans. This is the most famous. July 5, 2009, a Quetzalcoatl headdress near Silbury Hill. It's based on the Quetzal feathered headdress of Aztec kings. This was the crop picture. And this is the famous headdress of Moctezuma and the Quetzal feathers and the bird over here. That's what a Quetzal bird looks like. And here, now interestingly, this is the headdress. If we take the headdress, all these little dots and dashes, and flatten them out, get rid of the curve, we see the famous pyramid of Quetzalcoatl as a graphical transformation. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So this little curved region here, I plotted it on paper. I said, I wonder what it looks like if it wasn't curved around. And you make it flat on graph paper, and you see that, those two little dots. That's, and no one, unfortunately, no one solved that code exactly. I've solved it partly. No one knows exactly what it means. But it's pretty cool, the transformation. So we definitely have a link to Quetzalcoatl. We have the headdress. We have the pyramid. We have all these things. What else do we have? In the very center, there's something that looks like a feathered serpent with a beard. There's a man with a beard. Here he is, his two little eyes. This is on the pyramid there, and the little beard. And they've drawn that in the very center of the thing, coming out from behind. So he's making having a bit of a joke there, I think. Headdress. Now, not only that, but what happened was, this happened on July 5, 2009. And it was there, people walked the first day. 
The next morning, what happened? A policeman was going by at daybreak, off-duty Wiltshire policeman, and he saw three guys standing in the field near opposite Silbury Hill, the car park, and they're up in the field there in white coats. So he thought they were British Army people sampling the crop or doing some exercise. So being a policeman, he just parked his car and he decided to walk over just to check to make sure nothing funny was going on. And then he got his shock of his life because it turned out they weren't policemen, they were some kind of aliens. Walking around, they were checking to see what they had just made. They were checking out their artwork. And here's the policeman here about five or six in the morning, and here's these three guys here. I know where that hill is, the crop picture is right here. He comes out of the car park, walks across the road, and these three guys, he thought they were white coats, but they weren't, they, this was an artist's sketch. And here's what they look like, these tall blonde guys, I don't know if they're really blue-skinned, but tall guys in this clothing with long blonde hair. The crop picture was about here, behind them. So they'd walked also from the road to the crop picture. The crop picture was right on the hill behind them. And he saw these aliens there, and there was all sorts of static electricity. It was a big UFO close encounter of the third or fourth, what do you call it? Cl close encounter, anyway. And here it is, a map of it. Here's the hill. Here's the A4 where you park over here. And you cross the road, and then you walk over here. You see these tall guys, and there's a crop picture right there. And the policeman saw this. He didn't get any film, but he, he gave a lot of testimony. So the mother ship may not have been here, but they were probably here in a smaller ship, perhaps. Perhaps some of them coming around to help. So there's a clear relation between these tall blonde guys and the crop picture. So the big question now is, if a spaceship's coming, will Quetzalcoatl return to Earth like a serpent coming down the side of a pyramid? And here you see this serpent lay. Can you see that little zigzag serpent? And here's the pyramid. He's supposed to be coming down in the same fashion, that little zigzag. And he put that in the crop picture at the top of it, if you look carefully. So it's a perfect parallel. Is he coming down? And this is the general symbolism. You have the pyramid here with the serpent coming down. And here you have the, like, it's like a pyramid. He's coming down. Is he coming down here? And he drew the little thing. He's coming down the side of the hill there. And at Clay Hill, where I was a couple months ago, it's the same thing. He's coming down the side of the hill. And these little snake eyes all around, like the two eyes of a snake like at the base of the pyramid right here, the little snake eyes everywhere. So this is an artistic symbolism, but it keeps repeating, like he's going to come back. Here's another famous Mayan one. The end of the Mayan calendar was drawn 2008. Our solar system at the end of the Mayan calendar was pictured here four years before it happened. Very sophisticated. There was another part as well. That was near Averbury. And there are lots of Mayan things have been drawn in crops. So this is a typical Mayan sculpture. We have all these Mayan things, 2004, 2005, 2005, 2009. They've consistently been drawn in crops. So we have a strange link between the extraterrestrials and the Mayans. There's no doubt a strange link. So it's not just one fake. We're, talk we're talking about all these crop pictures, and there are probably like 30 or 40 that have Mayan connections to Mayan culture. Finally, our friend Quetzalcoatl, here's a Q, as you can see. Sometimes you see a Q in crops, and that was one of the symbols here, Q. He has this funny signature. Presume it's him. It's a funny, like a J shape with some stuff sticking out. So this was the one we just worked at the airport a few weeks ago. And if you look back, here he is, here's the headdress. You can go back through history to 1998, 1999, 2011, and you can see that same symbol, a little J with a little circle, drawn next to... Three other crop pictures, there may be more. There was an ankh drawn here. So those presumably are, is the signature of the crop artist. So he signed his work over occasionally to just signs the work. So we have this guy signing the work. It looks like Quetzalcoatl to me. So there's definitely signed. This is over 20 years. So crop circles have inspired a great deal of speculation about what it would be like if Quetzalcoatl returns. Here's a famous book by Daniel Pinchbeck, who was here last year, 2012, The Return of Quetzalcoatl, and he puts a crop circle on the cover. Here's some album cover, The Return of Quetzalcoatl, and they use crop circles here. Some musicians, I don't know who these guys are. Last year, or most interestingly, the Mexican Federal Police <laughs> have adopted this crop picture as their symbol. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. Is that cool? 
so that this is true. I thought it was a fake. It's real. The federal police have the Quetzalcoatl crop picture as a symbol. And what do these dots mean? That in Mayan, they're one, 1928 for when the police were made. One, nine, two, eight in Mayan numbers. So generally, we're at the stage now where the crop pictures, here's a summary. The crop pictures have appeared one more year. There's indications a spaceship is headed to Earth. If the spaceship comes, it's very possible that it will be this group of aliens who look human like us. The Quetzalcoatl group, maybe they lived in Central America a long time ago. Maybe they look human like us. And we'll be able to accept other aliens that look human before we accept gray aliens, won't we? So he walks in here, looks like Bill Clinton, you'll accept him. <laughs> or like a, or Donald Trump, or a, can you think of anybody who looks like an alien? Or like a David Bowie, walks in here looking like David Bowie, he'd be acceptable. But we, if he come in here with these big eyes or something, we, we'd freak out. So pro probably they'll pick a human race to make first contact with us. So the big question is, if we do have first contact, when will it be? And I think it could just be any time on from now. I won't say, but, but I mean, I think any time really, really if it happened this year, it wouldn't surprise me. But I wouldn't think it's that far away till we get an open contact with these friendly guys. And that's all for now. I'll stop now. Thank you. I'll just leave it out for now. I think it's the last one. We've got well done. We've got actually a lot of time left. That's good. We can show the movie or talk or questions. And questions. Let's yeah. do questions first, shall we? Okay. Let's do some more questions now. I wanted to, I didn't want to, okay. Why is the pyramid that shape? Why is it, is there a reason for that? Well, excuse me? Why is a pyramid the shape it is? Why is it important to be that shape? Well, I mean, uh, they're, well, all pyramids are built, not, they're not all the same. Some of them are triangular, some are square. Some are triangular pyramids, some are square, some are steps, some are... Is that significant, the shape of them? Uh, I mean, it's stable. It's just a way of building something. I don't know if there's any significance to it. No, I don't really know. People speculate on that. There definitely is, although I didn't mention it here. Mm -hmm. Some crop pictures have Christian themes. Mm -hmm. They've even shown the face of Jesus in crops, very detailed. Mm -hmm. So the question is, another big question, which is only speculation, all this returning on the white horse. Or is this something from the book of Revelation? Mm -hmm. The first horseman of the apocalypse comes back on a white horse mm -hmm. in Revelation. Mm -hmm. So is this a fulfillment of the... Is, is ET disclosure the same as the apocalypse? Apocalypse means unveiling of heavenly things. So when we say ET disclosure, does that mean the same as apocalypse? It doesn't mean disaster. And is this guy who's going to come, is he, if he does come, is he the first horseman of the apocalypse predicted in theology and all that? So that's an open question, but it's certainly uh, open. I mean, it, could, it could certainly be true. I, I can't say because it's just speculation. There could be a Christian relation like if you have time travel, then you think, well, the books of the New Testament could be based on time travel, not just on just guys talking. Like Daniel, have you, have you read the book of Daniel? He says, Gabriel says, let me tell you what will happen 2,300 years from now. So the book of Daniel in Babylon, he seems to be a time traveler from the future. He says, what will happen to the Jews 2,300 years from now? So you're really thinking about time travel, looking at the Jewish and the Christian things. So this is just an open question. I don't really have any firm... Hmm. Necessary well, I suppose so, yeah, I suppose it can, history can repeat. There could be parallel universes. We, there's a whole world out there we don't know about. We, there's a whole world of reality we just not, we're ignorant of, that's the trouble. So I could speculate, but uh, does anybody want to come up here and give the questions so they'll be seen? I just don't think it's interesting, people sitting in the back of the room there. People come up here so I can actually get... Have you still got that crop circle of um, the, the rockets where it was North, well, you know, the problem with North Korea and America now? Yeah, that crop circle of yeah. four rockets, have you still got that? Yeah, there's some, I, I just haven't shown it. There's some crop pictures which suggest something relating to like rocket launches or rockets being fired. 
that maybe it's a premonition of what will happen with Korea, things like that. And maybe you can see two years beforehand there's something about the Korean crisis, but it's so vague I can't really say what it means. Like they're going to show up just in time to save us or something like that. Any, anything you see in crops, though, you, often in retrospect you can say, oh, no, that's what they were talking about. But until the event happens, you can't really be sure what it's about. But it's certainly there are things like rockets going up and, and they're worried about things being fired. There are things like that drawn in crops. But I can't really interpret it. It's very hard to interpret the future. You can say, oh, he knew about it later, but he, you can't, I can't really say. So another, po another possible, <laughs> not speculation, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on starving disasters? Uh, can you, why don't you come up here? I can't, give me your thoughts first. I'm tired of talking. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of these subjects I don't know anything about. I don't know anything about most of these subjects. Uh, well, I've been studying about starving disasters. And um, I believe I'm from Arcturus because when I've looked up all the traits, it's me to a T. And my partner's from Pallades and he's everything, um, like to a T from Pallades. So I was just wondering if you heard of anything about star beings or star seeds from uh, other star systems uh, who we've never really belonged here from when we were little. We just always looked up at the night sky and we just never fit in with our families, with people in general, yeah. we, we really struggle. Yeah, and all the wars and fighting's going, we, we get really affected by it. So, yeah, just... I, I don't really know, however, there's no reason if you have reincarnation that you can't reincarnate here from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. But we can't prove it. No, no, I just... You can don't. feel like you're from somewhere else, but you yeah. can't really prove it. Yeah. But so it's possible. It's just that feeling of not belonging. These are all questions, are all possibles I don't know about. <laughs> Yeah, and there was one more question. Um, what are your thoughts on the 5G smart grid? That's I don't know anything about it. You don't? Okay. No, that I don't know anything about these subjects. Yeah. I tend, I'm not a paranormal person. No, no, that's okay. No, that's I okay. tend to stick just to like, I'm like a Spock or Tuvok. I'm like a Vulcan. <laughs> People say, aren't you more emotional? Because I just tend to stick on those things where there's some sort of evidence and focus on that. Because otherwise you get into a lot of speculation and you're not sure what's right. And it's really hard to get even a little evidence Field. Yeah. So when I talk, I, I may think about it, but I tend just to present what's really secure. Yeah. Although I may think about it, like you're saying. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not true, but I'm just no. saying I don't have any evidence on it, you know. Okay. Thanks. It'd be Thanks. interesting Thanks. if I did. Thanks. Okay. Hard to prove it, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Could we say last question? Can we do last? Mariana says last question. Yeah, that's right. Could be broadcasting about, warning us about it. Let's I, did, I, I was about to put in some more about that, but we were sort of running out of time. He means these three dots coming off the top. It's not clear what it means, whether it's a Morse code thing or a broadcast or Orion's belt or telling us about Orion. Maybe they're... It, it, I agree, there are three dots. I'm not sure what it means. Here we go. So there are three dots coming off. It's hard to know what I know what some of the present it today. It's not really that relevant. But uh, I don't know if the three dots means they're warning us about Orion as it was a good point, or if it means they're just symbolic of sending out a message or something else. There are, I've actually solved what most of these other things, but it's just a bit of a, it would take quite a while to explain all that. So. Okay, let one more come. Mariana seems uh, things are running out of time. Just a quick question. If I wanted to go and see one of the crop circles, I'm just wondering <coughs> about, you know, how do you go about that? So you went to England, yeah. so did you go there waiting to see them come, or did you know that they were there and then go? I mean, how long do they last? Is it something you would no, most people, Most people will go to England for like a month. And you go there maybe in July and August in that period. And you just wait around until they come like fish biting. Yeah. And, there's, and there's a community of people like it. Then you go see a community of people. And when one comes, you get a ride with somebody and you go to it or you, or you rent a car. So no one knows when they're going to come or not come. 
And you can't wait in Australia and then go over there. No. <laughs> well, if you were closer, you could. Right. Some people wait in the Netherlands and come over, but we're too far away because Netherlands are one-day drive. Right. But for Australia, you sort of have to go over there. From the Netherlands, they wait in the Netherlands. If something comes, they drive over to England the same day because it's about an eight-hour drive. Right. So they're only there for like a little period of time? Uh, it can be there for several weeks, but it gets older, so it's better to do that first few days because yeah. it looks a bit like an old fish or something after about a yeah. month or so. Right. So it just gets a bit old looking. It's better to see a fresh one the same day. <laughs> okay. okay. Is that enough?